Hello and welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed and today we're going to be continuing our Space Marines chapters videos by having a look at the Ultramarines. The Ultramarines are probably one of the most well-known chapters out there that many people will be able to identify and recognise with their armour and their name. They also feature heavily on a lot of the box art for the models that Games Workshop produces. So what I'm going to do today is go into their history and then we'll move on to their culture and organisation in our next video. So the Ultramarines were the 13th Legion during the Great Crusade, so they are one of the original first founding legions. Obviously they were later reorganised into a Codex Astartes chapter, and their Primarch is Robut Giliman. Now I can imagine there's a lot of people confused about how to pronounce this name, and so am I. I'm going to pronounce it as I just did regularly throughout the video, but there is no surefire guidance out there as to how to actually pronounce this name. If anyone has any out there, do let me know because I'd like to get this sorted. Right, moving on. It's also worth noting that Robut Gilliman actually wrote the Codex Astartes himself, so he is responsible for the organisation of the Space Marines in this 41st millennium. Now, because it was their Primarch who wrote the Codex Astartes, the Ultramarines follow the Codex Astartes very strictly, and severe punishments are actually implemented for anyone who goes outside the Codex Astartes when either in battle or dealing with their own brothers in private situations. Now they only ever deviate irregularly, and the most recent irregularity was the formation of the Tyrannic War Veterans, which are comprised entirely of veterans who fought against the Tyranids during the invasion of Ultramar. Now just to give you a brief overview, their chapter master is Marnius Calgar, and their homeworld is Macrag, on which sits the fortress monastery known as the Fortress of Hera. Their armour is very recognisable, again you will have seen this before, but just to reiterate, they have blue armour, almost totally, with white and gold highlight, with sometimes a bit of red thrown in there with the officers. Their battle cry is twofold, there is courage and honour, and we march for Macrag. Now the history, which I'm actually going to go through in this video, is not as well known as some of the other chapters because they didn't take a primary part in the Siege of Terror, and have never had their own codex, unless you count the Codex Space Marines, where they feature heavily. Now in their early days they were formed on Earth after the Primarchs were all taken by chaos and spread across the galaxy, and one of their earliest actions was actually the pacification of Luna, and it was one of the first pitched battles of the Great Crusade outside of Terra. Now moving away from the Legion, I just want to quickly go through the youth of Robot Gilliman, as his history is actually quite interesting. He landed on the planet of Macrag, as I've alluded to before, and was adopted by Connor, one of the consuls of the world who helped rule the planet. He was raised by the nobility and quickly mastered many subjects, including the arts of war where he excelled, crushing his enemies and even a coup that led to him becoming the sole consul of Macrag. It was this position which he held for five years when the Emperor arrived, recognising this leader as one of his lost sons. Leading on to the Great Crusade, Gilliman actually excelled, conquering multitudes of worlds for the Imperium. However, unlike some of his brothers, where they crushed opposition and moved on, the Ultramarines always ensured that the planet that they took was always maintained afterwards and had enough defences to keep itself safe after they left, and so allowed the planet not only to join the Imperium, but made sure it was a productive member of the Imperium when they left, which is why even 10,000 years later, many of the Ultramarines' conquered worlds still remained with the Imperium including many of the worlds in the Ultima Segmentum, on the eastern edge of the Imperium. In fact, the Ultramarines were so organised, their losses in battles were very rare, and they very quickly grew to a size in which they needed to divide up their legion again, not only into companies, but into chapters, which is where the chapter formation came from later on. Now, it's estimated they had roughly 250,000 Space Marines in their chapter, which is an incredible number, considering the average for a legion was between 50 to 100,000. So you have these numbers have given rise to the theory that the Ultramarines actually took on legions who descended from the two lost Primarchs, and so when the Primarchs were erased for whatever reason, their legions actually joined the Ultramarines, and so hence their huge numbers. Now we don't know if this is true or not, but it is a theory that's making its rounds, so I thought I'd let you know. Now during the Horus Heresy, the Ultramarines chapter was actually around Ultramar at the time, which was actually made up of 500 worlds who all owed allegiance to the Ultramarines. Now Horus ordered them to go and take the Viridian system. Now in order to do so, they had to assemble at Kalth, which was one of the primary worlds of the Ultramarines, and one of the most beautiful according to documents of the time. Now there they were actually ambushed by the word bearers, with a massive fleet of ships causing incredible damage to the planet and rendering the surface almost lifeless. The Ultramarines eventually defeated the word bearers and pushed them off after a long period of fighting. However, it did delay them a significant period and meant they were not able to participate in the Siege of Terror, only arriving after the forces had been defeated. 
Now because of this, it actually meant that the Ultramarines remained at relatively high strength compared to the legions who had taken part in the Siege of Terror, being badly beaten by the traitors. And so the Ultramarines took the forefront in taking the fight to the traitors, their massed numbers able to push back the traitorous sons of the Emperor as far as the Eye of Terror. Now also in this time, Gilliman actually took office as the Lord Commander of the Imperium for a short period, because the Emperor was of course crippled and unable to communicate and Lord Malkador had died in the Golden Throne. So as one of the most organised Primarchs, it fell to Gilliman to actually help maintain the Imperium for this period. And over a decade of warfare, he helped reform the Council of Terror into the High Lords of Terror, a body which still commands the Imperium today. Now after this decade of war, when the Imperium was returned to relative stability, Gulliman decided to pen a work known as the Codex Astartes. Now, many of you may be asking during the course of this, what is the Codex Astartes? And the Codex Astartes is actually a work which explains how a space should fight, how they should conduct war, how they should be organised, including that the legions should be split down into 1,000 strong chapters to prevent any one man, such as Horus, from ever holding the power that the Warmaster did ever again. Now, of course, several Primarchs did not agree with this work. Rorgaldorn, Vulcan and Lehman Russ opposed it, saying that it flew in the face of what the Emperor had chosen and that it was not how a legion should fight. However, Gilliman, supported by the Primarch of the White Scars and Korax of the Raven Guard, said that this is how space Marines should be organised to be most efficient in this new Imperium, and that they were traitors for trying to go against this organisation. Now, this did in fact nearly lead to a schism again within the Legions, however, Dawn, in his wisdom, eventually decided that they should not be fighting like this, and saw the wisdom of the Codex Astartes, allowing for his Legion to be broken up, along with all the other remaining Loyalist Legions, becoming the chapters of the Space Marines. Now, it was in this time, around about the time the Codex was penned, where it was believed that Gilliman actually killed Alpharius, Primarch of the Alpha Legion, on Escrador, although he suffered high losses because of his unconventional tactics in attacking the Alpha Legion. Also, in this period, the Ultramarines assisted the Imperial Fists as a relief force during their fight for the Iron Cage, helping prevent the Imperial Fists from being destroyed utterly, and mending some fences, of course, between Rorgaldorn and Gilliman. Now, a lot happened in the intervening years. The Imperium became the Imperium as we know it today, much conflict occurred, and the Ultramarines were always around, helping to shore up the Imperium, showing through their strength of character and their superior tactical knowledge how the Imperium should fight, rising as an ideal for a lot of people, although some see them as both arrogant and overbearing because of their over-dependence on the Codex Astartes, and their relative pride in the position that Gilliman took after the fall of Horus. Now, of course, the history is relatively straightforward, leading up to the invasion of the Tyranids. Now, the Tyranids originally came from the eastern fringes of the galaxy, so of course, the Ultima Segmentum was the first to be attacked by High Fleet Behemoth. Now, it was in the year 745 of the 41st millennium that this invasion happened, and it pushed the Ultramarines, as well as all the other forces of the Imperium, right back inside their own worlds, as the Tyranids consumed and destroyed huge amounts of planets in this area. It was only at the fight for Macrag itself, where the back of High Fleet Behemoth was broken, where Marnius Kalgar took the daring risk of fighting the Hive ships whilst in space and leaving only the Ultramarines' first company at Macrag's polar fortresses to defend Macrag. Now this again is another unconventional tactic that worked well and Behemoth was actually pushed back at this point. However, Macrag suffered heavily and the first company of the Ultramarines was almost wiped out to a man. Meaning of course there's a lot of bitter sentiment within the Ultramarines relating to the Tyranids. This led to the rise of the forming of the Tyrannic War Veterans, who are some of the most elite Tyranid fighters in the Imperium, and who are the best at taking the fight to the Tyranids, although they do share some similarities with the Scythes of the Emperor, who do similar things. Now, this is all I wanted to mention in relation to the Ultramarines right now. There are more things I want to bring up in our next video, so do keep voting, because after I finish the Ultramarines, we still have quite a few more chapters to go. Currently, the other chapters that are in the running are the Raven Guard, the Iron Hands, and bizarrely the Death Watch, who I didn't imagine would have such support on the channel, so of course they are all in the running. So do keep voting. That is all I wanted to say today. See you next time on the Vault Center.